Hi, welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. And I'm so proud I got Hilde in the show because she's the one that trained me 15 years ago, 13 years ago. No, 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 don't exaggerate. Yeah. It was 13 years ago. 13 years ago in everything that is presentation, skills, all of that. So I'm very, very grateful for that day I met you. And okay. then I finally pulled you in the show <laughs> to talk about some very intriguing stuff. So I'm going to first let you explain what you do to our okay. viewers. And then we're going to crawl deep into leadership, communication, FBI, oh lying God. on stage, <laughs> all of that is okay. going to be it's going to be exciting. Okay. Yeah. So since I met you, um, <laughs> a lot of things have changed. So actually, the first thing that I did with you was my, my key things was presentation skills. Yeah. But from there on, I started discovering that when people graduate from university, they need more than just presentation yeah, skills. Of course, of course. They need to learn how to communicate, how to sell themselves, how to give feedback, how to be assertive. Yeah. And that is why I expanded my business to communication in general. So if I got it correctly, executives of very large companies hire you to teach them how to communicate, give feedback, how to present. I mean, you teach the leaders of today. Well, that's part of what I do. I teach yeah. the leaders, but also the future leaders, leaders. of today. Yes. Because young people realize more and more that they need to have access to all those tools. So that's what I do. Okay. Before we go there. Yeah. You need to talk about FBI. You need to explain what was that story. Okay. NLP started with neurolinguistic programming. Well, no, no, it... no, actually it wasn't. Um, it was a long time ago. I was looking actually for a course on body language because yeah. I was intrigued by how do people show stress? How can you tell that somebody is lying? How can people see that you are lying on stage, for instance? Uh, We're sales, we never lie. It's a different kind of treat. We lie all the time, though, right? <laughs> Yeah. So I was looking for a course on that, and at the same time, I wanted to go on a cruise. And uh -huh. you're never going to guess, combination. I found a combination uh. of both. So really? I, took, <laughs> I took a training on a cruise boat on telling how people are lying. And the first training I took was with uh, a person called Janine Driver. And mm -hmm. if she sees the movie, she's going to be really happy I'm talking about her. Uh, and then afterwards, I took training with CIA and FBI X. FBI agents. And what I learned there is that um, a lot of people communicate and they show stress, they show that they're lying and they're not even aware of mm -hmm. that. And so when I talk to CEOs and when I have CEOs in coaching, they want to talk to their audience, they want to convince them of a strategy, but their whole body is it's showing it's stress. Fear. Yeah. It's showing fear or it's showing I'm telling something that I don't believe myself. Yeah. And people don't see that, but they do feel it somehow. So one of the things that I do with CEOs is I tell them, how do you leak stress? So they can have impact on how they like control their yeah. stress. Can you give some examples? Like what, what, uh, uh, how do you do it? They have to, they have to do it a lot. It's, it's, I mean, I remember you taped me and then I had to come back and back again. And, yeah. I, and after a while you get kind of bored and like, ah, here we go again. Yeah. But it, it's a way. But, are there some tips and tricks you, you could check? Well, not just about the lying. Let me, uh, let me wind that back a little bit to what are the things that are important when mm -hmm. you are a, exactly. a, an executive and you stand in front of an audience and you have to give a speech. One of the first things that I notice is that many people know what they're going to say, but they don't really have figured out why they want to say it mm -hmm. and what the beliefs are that they want to change in people's heads. So one of the things that I've been nagging about, you remember that, was <laughs> identify what is it that you want people to believe yeah. at the end of your talk. You, you, you would be amazed. I'm still saying on stage, people buy from people that believe. That comes from you then. Damn. Apparently. Don't ask me money. <clears throat> 13 years. Wow. You, you have good memory. I remember one thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you remember so, that. Believe is one. Right? So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, how are you going to engage your audience? Because I have seen so many boring oh, presenters. Yeah. They yeah. just go like, I call that the verbal diarrhea. Yeah, presenters, exactly. they go, yada, 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 yada. Make a joke. And then slide, slide, slide. Yeah. And it's okay to have slides. It's even okay to have bad slides. Mm -hmm. As long as you have a compelling message and you pull in your audience. You remember that I said that a good presenter is like a fisherman. He throws out a rod and he needs to put on bait. Yep. And so I'm not uh, saying anything that is like rocket science, but how do you pull in an audience? How do you engage them? How do you keep them with mm -hmm. you? And then comes the, the Q&A. Yep when they get questions, that is when stress 
Absolutely. Shows. Yeah. So um, you, you may remember there was one time this guy, and we know the company he was working yeah. for. I'm not going to name names. Yeah. And he was presenting in a T-shirt. And he was standing in front of an audience, and he was extremely nervous because he had to sell a strategy. And he, see, he had no sleeves. So he said to everybody, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he had no sleeves. He I'm was like, so nervous. He was caressing his arms yeah. because that's one of the things that we do. And then it went away, but as the Q&A approached, he, he got, got questions that were stressing questions. Every stressing question, he went like, oh, that's an interesting <laughs> question. So everybody like the could cuffling, see. The, the fake cuffling things. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, people caress yeah. themselves. Women, yeah. they, they, they stand like this, correct? Yeah, that's something themselves. I remember. You should never try and do this whole thing. Uh, when you touch your body. Stop touching yourself. Yeah. 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 Or people who go like, oh, that's an interesting question. Yeah. They put their finger in, in front of their mouth. Well, depending on what the rest of the body says, that's a sign of, I'm not going to say what I want but to say. most people don't realize it. No. They just don't realize. So and that's what I'm saying. When I teach about body language, um, I'm not teaching anything new. People know. Awareness, actually. Yeah, but they don't look at the right stuff. So yeah. once they have been in my course, actually, I have a course that is called I know that you're lying. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's a good name. And, and and people walk out and they say, now we know what to watch for. Yeah. Because like, for instance, is one of the stupid things that everybody knows is if ever somebody crosses their arms, yeah, that's it means they close one. the communication. I sometimes do it on purpose now. But that's bullshit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean zilch. It doesn't mean anything. If somebody closes his arms, it could mean that he's paying attention even more. Yeah. It That's depends on my case, yeah. what the face is doing. Yeah, and it's just because I don't know what to do with my arm, so I'm kind of going to do this. Yeah, it, and it doesn't mean that you're closing the communication. True, true. So Let it be a lesson, right? This is, this is okay, right? <laughs> it's okay, depending on when you do it. If it's in response to a question, and yeah, it happens exactly. in the first five milliseconds, that's why then it's like, not okay. That's why we like Hilda. <laughs> <laughs> so, one more thing. Yeah. I just wanted to dig a bit into communication and executives. Because okay. I think leaders of tomorrow, they first want to understand a bit more. And two, I always want to know, how do I deal with these guys? Because if you train the top guys, yeah. I need to know how to deal with them. So, what, what's your advice around the whole communication? What, what do you? Th what's the, the biggest question they ask most of the time? Let's um, start with the problem and then work from there. The biggest problem that they have is, is motivating people yep. uh, and, and giving feedback. Yep. You asked me a question and, and I didn't prepare this. No, so no exactly. I, I recently did a course on leadership with, with top leaders from a big yep. company. And yeah, there's three things. The first one is how do you motivate people? How do you engage people in the same vision, in the same strategy? How do you do that? Um, what I notice is that a lot of CEOs, they sound like missionaries when yeah. they do that. They go like, and you have to do this and you have to do that. And really they try to convince. Yeah. So that's not a good But they point. have a compelling story. Even those guys, yeah. sometimes it's like really compelling. But I was in a company and the CEO kept doing that. And when you first meet him, you're like, wow. But after the fourth time, you're like. <sighs> you go like uh, yeah. Like so that's this, a, good one. Yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So the second one is, uh, it's, it's a bit aligning with that. How do you coach people? into thinking the way you think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you ask the right questions, As the you don't sales, have to huh? preach. Yeah, you don't have to <laughs> preach. So coaching is one of the very important things. And, and we were talking about a colleague of mine uh, and me recently. Uh, when you look on internet and you go for a definition of coaching, you, you find like a dozen mm -hmm. different definitions. And they have nothing in common, all those definitions. Mm -hmm. And then you ask managers, are you a good coach? And they go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how I got here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then you ask them to do a coaching conversation, and all they do is ask closed questions. And then I go like, who's doing the thinking here? Yeah. So that's the second one. And the third one is how to give feedback. What I notice is that people don't give feedback. They give appreciation. They will yeah. say, I did not like what you did. You should not do it like that. Instead of saying, I noticed that you did that and that and that and that. What made you decide to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, they don't feed back things. No. You, yeah, I follow, follow okay. completely. So those are the most important things that leaders and executives, uh, they, they need coaching on from mm -hmm. me. Well, what's, what's, to wrap it up, what's your biggest frustration? If you, I know this comes out of nowhere. What's yeah. your biggest frustration working with these guys? As in, where do you think you wonder they could do so much better? They are, un the potential is untapped. With yeah. something, probably something stupid. You say, come on. 
It's, I'm it's, always looking for the one domino yeah. that, that makes the whole thing fall. Like, what's the one thing if you... Well, uh, I don't have to think very long time. I'm a very pragmatic lady. Mm -hmm. They are wasting so much time in blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and they don't get to the key of it when they again i come to the same topics when they do a presentation they have so much clutter in their yeah. presentation and i go like what's your key message you could do this in 10 minutes why do you take half an hour to bore people to death yeah. and kill them all with slides yeah. and slides now i remember where i got my pragmatic approach i got like <laughs> i got suffocated with strategy and like, guys let's just do things right let's yeah. not have another meeting another meeting and oh man I got and, so and they postpone and yeah we, we'll need to take a look at that yeah, yeah. We'll need to talk about that. They are yeah, actually we'll the bottleneck yeah, in many cases because they want the message perfected while I'm saying start moving and then you tune and tune in and you iterate. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that frustrates me in that perspective is that many meetings I attend because sometimes I'm the shadow person yeah, in the meeting. In the so yeah. I sit in the back and I watch <laughs> them. Is that many meetings, almost 70% of meetings, end with intentions and not with a plan. And they go That's like, yeah, one. okay, what yeah. did we decide? Yeah, we're going to deep dive into that. That's an intention. It's yeah. not a plan. So, so nothing happens. So you're saying, right, against that date, this needs to happen. That's, yeah. the, That's the, real, the real action. When I'm sitting there, I'm going to say, okay, we're going to deep dive. What does that mean? Yeah. What are you going to do Monday? And they go like, well, we're, we're going to think about it. <laughs> That's yeah. an intention. It's yeah. not an action, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I see a lot of things in, in coaching happening around that thing. Yeah. It's all about turning intentions into small baby step actions and do something about it. Yeah. So that's my biggest frustration. It's the utter waste of time. I always say to people around me, if I could have one euro for every minute wasted in, in Belgium today, it's not I'd only be in Belgium. a million, I'd be a billionaire. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and with that, let's plan an action. We go drink a coffee now. That's a good idea. If you love what you hear, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for a lot more. Hilda, okay. thanks for joining. It was good working with you again.